The Norton Motorcycle Company has had over a dozen owners over its 124 year on again, off again run. But for the last few years, one sketchy character has come up as the height of controversy and fraud and just general sleaziness against motorcyclists. And his name is Stuart Garner. Garner is the former owner of Norton Motorcycles and a man pretty much hated by every single fan of British motorcycling. Me, I'm Adrian from Your Motorcycle. I usually make videos aimed at helping motorcyclists, but in this case, we're gonna do a little news report because two years ago I started covering the story and I promised you guys when there was an update, I would give it to you, and here we finally are. First, a quick synopsis for those of you guys who don't know who I'm talking about. This is Stuart Gardner. He used to own Norton Motorcycle Company. He's been accused of swindling motorcyclists and swindling pensioners. That means little old ladies are just getting their life savings ripped off because of this dude. He is one greasy guy. Stuart Gardner. Greasy bastard. Even just the way he came about buying Norton in the first place was hella greasy. So what I mean by that is he was looking to get loans to get money to purchase the company and one of the ways he did it was he kind of frauded the people who he was getting money lent from. So he offered as collateral 100% of a business that he owned. You know, if I can't pay you back, you can have my business. The only problem was he didn't actually own this business. He only owned like 50% of it, but he offered the whole 100% of the business as collateral. So, Stuart Garner, crazy bastard. And the next million pounds that he got, which is about 1.3 million US, he got, this was money that came out of a scam. So he wasn't involved in the scam, but he had two associates that were. They were both convicted of fraud from this scam and they turned around and they took the fraudulent money and they gave him a loan with the money. So while Stuart Gardner was not actually implicated in this, um, it's to me, it's just greasy. So now he's bought Norton. He's got a bunch of pensioners uh, funds heavily invested in it and he is taking deposits left, right, and center, and in some cases making people pay in full for motorcycles before they've even been produced, let alone delivered. He uses the funds to buy himself a mansion that's pretty much a, a castle. Anybody familiar with motorcycle racing or with the British motorcycle scene will have heard of Donington Hall. It's not technically a castle, but let me put it this way. When the French Revolution kicked off and the uh, French monarchy was fleeing the company to live in exile in the UK, they lived in Donington Castle. So this place is not a shithole, okay? <laughs> this is a nice place. He bought himself that to be Norton's headquarters, but it was really just a glorified castle for himself to live in. Stuart Garner, crazy bastard. Rather than do things like, I don't know, spend money on research and development, make sure his products were safe, pay his suppliers so he could actually get the parts that he needed to make the motorcycles that he'd already sold even though he didn't have parts to build them. He used the pension funds and motorcycle deposits to purchase an Aston Martin for himself. No, I'm just kidding about that. He used the funds to purchase six Aston Martins for himself because one was not a big enough waste of pensioners' money. He bought himself six. Fuck me. Stuart Garner, fucking dickhead. So I don't think I need to explain to you guys that when you spend all the money on not buying the parts you need to make motorcycles because you're not paying your suppliers and instead buying yourself a freaking castle and six Aston Martins, the company went belly up and most people did not get their Norton motorcycles. And some of the people who did still got screwed anyway. You know, if there was a warranty problem with the bike and the customer brings it back to Norton HQ so that Norton can fix the stuff under warranty, well, Norton had no way of getting parts so they would just take the parts off of your warranty bike, put it on a different bike, that way they could fulfill an order from someone else, get someone else's money, and then just try and keep the sham running for as long as they could. And that's not a knock on the workers because they're just you know following directions. They don't really know what's going on behind the scenes. Basically, I don't wanna, I don't wanna make it seem like I'm making light of this because it is something really sad, but I don't wanna do a video that was super depressing either. The reality is though, it, it does suck. It left many seniors totally screwed out of their pensions, totally screwed out of their life savings. It's ruined lives, it's ruined relationships. It's been shit for a lot of people. And then even the motorcyclists, like our own community that was affected, the situation really sucks. So I'm trying to make this lighthearted as much as I can so this video just isn't gonna be super depressing. So obviously, eventually the company would go bankrupt. They would get bought up by TVS, which is a giant in the small displacement motorcycle scene in India. TVS so far has been doing a doing some good stuff like they've issued recalls on the Norton motorcycles that were made during the Garner era which I think is cool but they have been totally tight-lipped and not said a word on whether or not they're going to honor any of the deposits that were put down by previous purchases or what's going on there 
they haven't said a word about that. So TVS Motors, still kind of greasy. I don't, I don't know. I mean, they were frauded out of about 18 million, the pensioners. So for a, a multi-billion dollar company, 18 million is not, it's not pocket change, but it's not gonna make or break, you know, their future. So the fact that they have not done anything, if not for the pensioners, and at least for the motorcyclists who put money down, TVS Motors, a little bit kind of maybe greasy. Anyway, we have an update on the Stuart Garner situation from rideapart.com, which I will uh, read you a few excerpts. Basically, they said he was a sole trustee over three separate pension funds. These added up to about $18.7 million altogether. When the pensioners and their families attempted to pull the funds out, they weren't able to, which is totally illegal. Garner pleaded guilty to pension fund mismanagement, but said it was done in error, not on purpose. I didn't know any better. I feel like if you have $18 million of some people's money, you should have an accountant and he will know better or she will know better. Uh, I don't buy it at all. Apparently the judge didn't buy it either, but at the same time, the sentencing was complete garbage. For his punishment, for ruining the lives of these people, because let's be honest, if you lose 50000 or $100,000 when you're 30 years old, you have time to make that back. You have time to, to recoup. But if you lose that money when you're 60, 70, 80 years old, you can't, right? You can't. All his punishment was, was an eight month sentence suspended for two years. So what that basically means is if he commits no further offenses within that two year time frame, he will not have to serve any time whatsoever. And even if he does do something terrible, like, I don't know, kills your cat right in front of you, um, he's only gonna go to jail for eight months for the fraud that he did that, that ruin so many people's lives. To me, that's absolutely, absolutely insane and unfair. So where does that leave everything, all the pieces that we've been talking about? Well, a UK pension ombudsman basically ordered him to pay back the $17 million US and Stuart Gardner's uh, easy way out of that was he just declared bankruptcy. And, and when you declare bankruptcy, you're no longer on the hook for any of your stuff from before. Stuart Gardner, fucking dickhead. And as for all of the motorcyclists, it seems like they're kind of equally up the creek without a paddle and uh, TVS has not really commented or promised them anything. So that is, is you know, another part of this, this whole thing is a disaster, really. I'm really curious to know what your thoughts are on this whole Norton saga, specifically if you guys are from the UK or India where you're a little bit closer to TVS, you're a little bit closer to Norton, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say please leave me a comment, let me know. And even if you're not from there, let me know, do you agree that the sentencing was just bullshit? I know white collar crime and all, but this, as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Ride safe, but have fun. Hit subscribe if you want more motorcycle content. Peace.